What's up guys, second video of the night, uh, 2005 Sea-Doo RXT 215, the earlier version of the Vortex Supercharged Intercooled powerhouse of the early 2000s that started the power wars in the jet ski industry, at least in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> maybe the power wars but not the dependability wars if you know what i'm saying um and i'm not hating on sea do you know but i have got so much more experience in yamaha than i do sea do and you know if really i said it before and i'll say it again even in the last video if the rental companies are using sea do or i'm sorry yamaha and not sea do there has to be a particular reason, and it's just always something. Um, Cowies, man, I got a Cowie over here too. Uh, I'll make another video on that one. That's a <laughs> that's a uh, Ultra 260X. Uh, it's a nice machine, man, but the guy that owns it is beating it to death. Uh, so this thing came in with a charging issue uh, a week ago, and I checked the stator, um, I checked uh, checked the wiring, uh, battery connections, grounds. Uh, there's two connection points on the harness of these uh, in 2005, probably all the way up to about 2008, uh, starting from uh, you know basically the regulator. Uh, on back down here on the back side of the engine um, right around in there can't see it but right around in there um, anyway so the uh, the issue with this thing was is that he uh, his wife would get out on the on the river and after about 45 minutes um, it would throw a low 12 volt code uh, on the instrument cluster and he did not know what to do, so he would just always take it back to the uh, the ramp or the dock and tie it off and load it up. And then he and her would go out on the Cowie and they would, uh, you know, finish the day out, go have fun, whatever. But anyway, so I couldn't find anything wrong with this originally. Um, he had a Rule King battery in this thing. Uh, I didn't even know Rule King made a CL30. Uh, battery AGM and the Providence brand like I've never seen one um, but when he had it in here the last time the uh, the Providence battery would not come up above 11.6 and I had uh, I had the battery tender on it for like six hours on a Sunday and it would not come up beyond 11.6 once you took the charger off of it and I mean don't get me wrong it's 1.25 amps uh, it's not a lot, but a good AGM battery will always come up. Uh, it may take it a few hours, but they just hold so much capacitance and voltage, it's unreal uh, compared to a flooded battery. Flooded battery will come up faster, but it's reserve as shit. But anyway, so um, I went ahead and suggested that BNC had jump started this thing a few times at the dock, that it was probably a good idea to change the regulator. So I have changed that. And after further investigation, <laughs> this is where it gets funny. Um, I will try to orient this camera accordingly while holding the light. Um, the connections on the fuse for the uh, charging fuse from the regulator to the battery had a hot spot that I did not see the last time. And you can see that it's from the regulator and it's clean but the other one has a spot and there's no burning of the vinyl on the wire after the uh, the terminal uh, hugger or, or whatever to the uh, spade of the fuse but uh, anyway so these terminals once you release the locking mechanism on the back side when you reach up in here and uh, let me turn on this other light that's down in the hole here um, that was really good once you push those down these actually come up 
they do not come out from the bottom they come up that was the first one I'd ever seen but whatever so I had checked these uh, these pad connections here <coughs> on the starter solenoid and I know that on the the earlier version of the GTS uh, or GTX uh, with the earlier versions of the Fortec the uh, the MPEM module and the battery were located up here in front of the engine but on the RXT and I'm sure probably the uh, RXP RXT they're probably all up here because this is a basically a two-seater and not a three-up but they when they're mounted back there on the GTX's these uh these are prone to water sloshing around in the hole because they sit you know basically in the center of the hole where the water predominantly stays but sometimes water intrusion gets up in here uh, especially in salt water conditions in this wheel uh, water will wick up in here and it will eat these connections where these wires go up into these uh, similar to the battery acid uh, corrosion back in the like GM cars back in the earlier 2000s on the on the side post batteries it's kind of what happens but these are fine the, th this this hole is clean as a whistle um, these two skis were owned by an old man um, anyway you know I guess midlife crisis hell I don't know but uh, so what I found was the last time it was in here I pulled this fuse out and it did not have any evidence of of resistance whatsoever but I knew if it continued it would show its face and sure enough he brought it back he went out Monday um, and after 45 minutes with uh, new uh, talked him into getting a deck of battery um, because the rule king battery wouldn't hold over you know 11.6 but I had seen videos of this but it was almost always for that pad connection on the starter solenoid but the fuse looked like this and you can see that it actually heated one side up and there's a spot there and that side looks like that it's actually etched there's material missing off the spade and if that doesn't scream I'm trying to put amperage into this battery and she don't want nothing to do with it I don't know what does so I think what I'm gonna do is is I'm gonna clean these up and I'm gonna solder a new uh, solder a new fuse in here I don't have any of these terminals um, I work on thermal kings a lot for a profession in my day job and but I don't have any of these here I've got some at work but I don't know if they're compatible I don't think so because all the other ones are bottom load terminals that I've got um, so I'm just gonna solder uh, with some good thin Kester brand solder. I used to work on uh, two-way and CB radio equipment and, and uh, high uh, high frequency radio stuff back in the day. That's like the ill na na of solder. But uh, yeah, so after uh, after two or three weeks of having problems with this thing, I think I finally knocked it out of the park. So that uh, pretty much wraps it up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna change that out, solder it out, and we'll check her with the old meter one more time here. And, and uh, take her out on the river this probably Saturday and check it out, make sure everything's good. But uh, but yeah, so I hope this helps somebody out and somebody finds it useful. Uh, and uh, anyway, I will uh, start making a video on this next Cowie uh, with its cavitation issue and I'll catch you on the flip. See you, bye.